Uh, my name is Matt Bobbitt, and I started um, a company back when I was right out of high school and first in college, and it was uh, called Bobbitt Corgan, uh, and it was a pressure washing company, and, and we pressure wash buildings and driveways and things of that nature, and, and uh, from there I went into the hospitality industry and worked for uh, Creed Ford at the time, it was called Cunner Ranch Steakhouse, and we helped open that restaurant, and I was actually a, a busboy and a server and a bartender um, with Creed, then became general manager of that unit, and then from there, <clears throat> I left the Ford Group, and uh, a partner and I bought Fajita Rita's, which is a local eatery here in, in the College Station market. And then from there, a trend, uh, that, that unit failed and went out of business, and that's when I started the, the project that I'm in now, which is Global Event Group and Catering. And uh, we started um, out of a college apartment, basically, and, and went from a college apartment to a one-car garage, and then to a two-car garage, and then to a house, and then a facility. And now we are uh, uh, the national caterer for uh, Avon Breast Cancer and Walk. We do uh, the Association of Former Students at Texas A&M, um, Austin City Limits Music Festival, Lollapalooza, Chicago. Uh, we're part of a, a tremendous amount of national events as well as the local events, um, including you know, a tremendous amount of, of work for um, Texas A&M University. My experiences at A&M uh, were, were pretty typical, I think, of a lot of people that attend this university as far as, you know, embracing the culture. I think that's something that, that happens when you attend this university. It, uh, it kind of uh, surrounds you and you become part of something that's kind of magical. Um, I uh, joined a fraternity, uh, Beta Theta Pi, when I was uh, here at a &M, and then and then from there, um, you know, it created a lot of uh, friendships and, and, and people that I still you know, do business with or in touch with to this day. Um, graduated agriculture economics, obviously, and uh, went into the, uh, the the business ventures that I, uh, you know, spoke about earlier. But as far as attending the football games and the um, baseball games and, and things of that nature, that was something that that we we did on a regular basis, as well as um, always had a job. That, uh, I worked, you know, 40 uh, plus hours a week um, at when I was at when I was here at A&M. Uh, described in my early career, I have to kind of take take back a little bit. I've always kind of wanted to be an entrepreneur, so I, you know, started this, you know, my first company and and, um, and failed, and then. Um, I went into the restaurant business kind of by default because when I graduated Texas A&M, I didn't know really what I was going to do, but I was already a part of something that I believed in, which was the restaurant business and a, a certain uh, group, uh, the Ford Restaurant Group, and uh, they'd offered me a management job, and and so I was just like any other college graduate at that time. Thought I needed to make X amount of dollars when I graduated, and uh, I was worth X amount of dollars, and then. And you, you, you kind of get told what you're worth and, and what they're going to pay you instead of you demanding what you think you're worth. So I, I cut my teeth in the management side, which is something that I think to this day I still use uh, as, a, as a tool, a teaching tool uh, with the people that graduate Texas A&M now that are underneath me because you really don't know what management is until you get in there and perform the task and do it and then are responsible for results and actions and I think for me earlier in my career that's something that I had to learn because you know when employees didn't show up the manager does the job when the customer gets a complaint the manager takes care of the complaint uh, when there's a problem on the finances or the budgets the manager has to take control of that so I think you know early on in my career um, that was something that I had to learn and I did learn and it has taught me how to, I guess, carry that on or pass the torch to 
other young graduates here coming out of the university. Achieving success is something that uh, I don't know if entrepreneurs truly ever acknowledge that they've achieved because most entrepreneurs there's always one more thing they're wanting to do. Um, for us, if you go back in time when we started our operation, I would have told you that success was um, being able to pay the, the bills, and pay the overhead, and then have a little money to put back in your pocket. Then once you hit that milestone, then success is making, you know, uh, X amount of dollars and, and having the assets to be able to expand. And once you do that, so there's always another benchmark. So to be able to achieve that, I, I truly think that it, it comes with accountability and people that are truly accountable find themselves constantly having success because when they're accountable for their, for their work, for their actions, for their financials, for their, their family, um, and put all that together, that, that's truly what it takes to be successful. And, and I think you can't achieve any goals or anything you want to if you're not accountable to the actions that it takes to, to become successful. You know, one thing I'd like to share with some of the students that's coming through the Department of Agriculture Economics is um, this department is a gateway to the future of what you're wanting to do. You come into it and, and at first you think you're streamlining into agriculture and, and you start realizing that almost everything starts with agriculture and it's up to you to find that widget that you would like out of that group and, 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 and go after it. Um, I believe that this department truly gives you an advantage of the fact that we're so diversified with so many different levels of expertise that surround you in the department that whatever you're wanting to do, you can find a path by going through this department. So my advice is on the, you know, to the students is, to truly utilize uh, your professors and your resources to maximize uh, the degree that you're getting from this department. You know, one of the things that uh, you hear about from successful people is um, where there's a successful man, there's always a successful or a partner or a woman behind that man. And I truly believe that's one thing, and one of the reasons that we have, um, that we do what we do for ourselves is because of the family. Because um, we value the relationships that we have with our children, or our parents, and, and um, it's just very important to us. And sometimes when we catch ourselves working, you know, 60, 70 hours a week, seven days a week and we start missing things such as dance recitals and soccer games and that stuff. We, we, we sit down and we reevaluate what we're doing and we make changes immediately and uh, we make time to, to attend those, those events because uh, once you blast through life you look back and, and those are some of the memories that you're going to want to have. So we, we do put a precedence on uh, finding time for family and friends. You know, when I got the phone call uh, that I was nominated and uh, accepted to this um, registry, it really set me back. And, and my, my first initial thought was, uh, wow, what an honor. And I really thought hard about what, I, what I'd been uh, honored with or for. And, and, and I thought to myself and told myself in an inside voice that, I really have to be a tremendous leader and I have to make sure that my game stays elevated to respect, out of respect for this registry and the former uh, registrars that are in it, I felt like that my leadership and my attitude and my integrity, everything that goes along with this award that I had to maintain it at the highest level and I had to work hard to keep striving to achieve 
um, excellence in other areas to, to uh, justify the fact that I'm on this registry. You know, for the future entrepreneurs, I, I think one thing is, is relevant when you sit in these classes at Texas A&M, especially uh, uh, in, the, in the agriculture economics classes, uh, you, you decide that you want to be an entrepreneur and, and you, you, you wonder, how am I going to be an entrepreneur? And there's no real roadmap to become an entrepreneur. You kind of have to find it. And a lot of times I talk about the transition from corporate America to entrepreneurship and what it takes. And at the end of the day, after you receive your education, and then you gain some experience in the real world, um, it's finding that correct opportunity to jump at becoming and being an entrepreneur and having that widget that's gonna take you to the next level to where you can afford to pay yourself a salary and, and uh, afford life. So I think if there's any advice, I think that you have to understand the timing it takes to become an entrepreneur. You don't just wake up and say, I'm going to be an entrepreneur. You have to strategically plan out um, finishing school, learning from uh, peers and learning from companies that will actually pay you to learn their trade for you to be able to utilize that as an entrepreneur. And I think that's the most important thing people need to realize coming out of college. Go, go let someone pay you to learn what you're wanting to eventually produce. And uh, instead of you paying for your education, now they're paying you to learn and then you can go utilize that down the road.